So, how quickly can a plan like this be implemented? Um, not too quickly. Um, in terms of who does our timetable, it's not necessarily done by subject leaders. It is done by um, our deputy head currently at the moment. Um, it's a plan that obviously takes a lot of time and effort in terms of timetabling, so staffing issues actually, the number of periods each subject has a week. Uh, we have a two-week timetable, so it's, it's over the two weeks. Um, obviously, st you know, staffing, how many staff we can have um, on each subject. Do staff have the correct amount of free time, uh, PPA time, planning time that they should have? So actually, getting it all together is not a quick process. Um, I know that the current timetable for September this year, uh, the, the start of the academic year, was started before Christmas. Um, so the process on that is, is a long process, especially when you have maybe staff leaving, uh, maternity. Um, so in terms of juggling that around, it's, it's not a job that I'd, I'd like to take on. Um, but yeah, fairly difficult. And it's, you know, in terms of obviously trying to add more time to us, it's then who, who loses time. Um, unfortunately, we are becoming less and less important with the curricular time. We are kind of put in last, unfortunately. Can you mention that? So how difficult is it going to be for schools to find the extra hour within a week to give the, to give the kids the PE? Um, I think it, it solely depends on what the focus of the school is. Um, if maybe you're in an outstanding school where results are um, outstanding and progress is great and you know your attainment is, is fab, you may have a little bit more time to um, some extra P into the timetable. Um, if you're in a requires improvement school, um, or school that's struggling, failing um, in special measures, unfortunately the priority is not PE. The priority would be to um, include extra lessons for your core subjects. Um, in terms of obviously government initiatives, um, the focus on the EBAC subjects, core, core, core you know, English, Math, Science, History, Geography, um, it shifts. Uh, as I said previously, it, we are becoming less and less important, unfortunately. Okay. Sorry, Isabella. Sort that out. Okay. Um, so, do you think something like this? Um, we mentioned you know, how hard it would be for this to be timetabled. So, do you think it would be possible for them for the plans to be implemented in sort of before school and after school hours? Um, I'd like to think so, but I think in terms of the logistics of it. Um, you know, we have a lot of students that actually don't like PE, so getting them to bring their kit for the two hours a week is um, as difficult um, as it is. Um, in terms of our extracurricular timetable, we have external coaches that come in, and the timetable that we have is, is jam-packed with, obviously, PE staff plus people coming in. Um, the only problem is, is the amount of students that you have in a year group. So, you know... Mondays are meeting nights, so we don't do any extracurricular. We have a coach that comes in, but it's not run by the PE staff. And that's left with then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night. Um, so there you've only got four nights um, to, to have that. Obviously, you've got that before school option, so that could be a possibility. Um, again, you may have some resistance from staff. They work hard enough as it is, so why do they need to be working an extra hour in the morning? Um, obviously after school we, we do extracurricular anyway the only thing that we may struggle with with that as well is we have fixtures tournaments that sometimes extracurricular has to be cancelled so if you're having that as a block compulsory time there may be times when there's, there's no staff there because we have a fixture or a tournament that we enter within the city um, so it'd be pretty tough um, especially our key stage for our year 11, PE is not the focus for them at the moment. Uh, you know, it's exam season, even before them, uh, before exams have started, their time is not spent after school doing PE. For a small minority, there are, which is great, um, but they're at science revision, maths revision, you know, they, they, they're doing those revision sessions because that has been the focus for our school. In other schools, it may be different because maybe the progress in the attainment there is actually a lot better. For us, our focus is to improve results, to improve um, the school. For core PE, they don't have an exam. So when, obviously, you're looking from above, above me, so head teacher, SLT, um, that's probably not going to be their focus. Yeah. So you mentioned the, the kids who do PE at the moment, mm -hmm. they'll be easy enough to get in. Mm -hmm. How hard do you think it would be for kids who you know, don't see PE as their main focus? If a plan was to be mm -hmm. compulsory, 
yeah. how hard do you think it would be to get them in? Uh, I think it would be extremely difficult. Um, again, this is just obviously from my experience. From other schools, it may be fairly easy. Um, we do have majority of students who bring their PE kit and participate. Um, quite a lot that don't do anything else extra. Uh, but we still have an, a min minority of students who refuse to participate in some core PE lessons that we have now, so the two. So actually increasing that and giving it before or after school. I think it would be changing that mindset. So for them, you know, it, it would need to be, it's part of your school day. It's a period six, let's say. We have five periods at the moment. It would be a period six, so it's added on, you know, to the yeah. day. That would that would have to be where it it come from. Not it's eight till nine, and it's before school or after school. It would be have to have been have seen to be within the schedule. Within the schedule, yeah. Um, just a, that change of mindset that actually it's not, you know, it, it's it is part of your school day still. Does a school like this have the staff and facilities to you know accommodate an extra hour a week? Um, not in PE, we wouldn't. No, uh, we're currently losing a member of our PE department this year. Um, which leave us three full-time members of PE, um, the whole school. Um, we have a, another member of staff who doesn't currently teach PE, but will be teaching some Key Stage 3 PE next year. Uh, we have trainee teachers, so we currently have a trainee teacher, which has worked quite well for us to be able to do that little bit of extra, um, because he, he's based here for the year to do his training. Um, so that's been quite beneficial for us, you know, to offer more, which has been great. Um, but Facility wise, great. We have a swimming pool, we have a sports hall, tennis courts, all weather pitch, football pitches, rugby pitch. As you know, we're we're you know fully equipped. Uh, in terms of staffing, because obviously we have GCSE subjects, so next year we have three year ten GCSE classes, um, which they have five periods over the two weeks. That starts to take up the timetable a lot more, um, as well as obviously your core PE that they have as well as the rest of the years as well. Yeah. So apart from the obvious benefits of getting children healthier, mm -hmm. can you see any other benefits that an extra hour a week would give? Oh, definitely. I think, um, you know, like, especially for, our, for our, our older one, it's, well, for all, it's, it's a little bit of a, not necessarily a break, because obviously they're still working hard, but it is, it's a difference to let off a bit of steam, you know, for the academics, the more classroom based, shall I say, not academic, classroom based subjects when they're in a classroom all day. Um, I know students who actually are quite misbehaved maybe in other lessons but when they come to PE they, they like to get out and you know be active and on their feet and they're far more pra practical. So yeah there are, there are lots of benefits um, in that you know just in terms of teamwork, um, building confidence, building self-esteem, things like that you know they all come into that. Um, students that don't necessarily participate in PE outside of school in competitive games, but actually in more sort of individual sports, um, there are huge benefits from. I mean, recently what we've tried to do for the older ones is give them something that they can maybe continue to do when they leave school. So I've been doing a bit of yoga, and Pilates and Zumba and things like that, that actually um, it's a little different to maybe key stage three where you, you're actually looking at specific skills and your more traditional sports like your hockey, your netball, football, rugby, whereas key stage four we tried to give them a little bit more of an option which we find works in our favour. Um, they're more inclined to participate because they can maybe see themselves doing it um, post 16 so when they leave which we found this year has been quite beneficial. Also in terms of our year 11 to try and de-stress them slightly. We have a very, very, um, currently at the moment, year 11, very stressed with exams. So actually having that, um, you know, yoga, Pilates, has been quite beneficial for them in terms of having a break and relieving a little bit of stress. Um, so yeah, so that's worked quite well for us this year. Okay. Yeah. That's everything. Okay. Wonderful. Real. Thank you. Is that all right? Yeah.